What is up, people? In this video, we will witness the marriage of supply and demand and the birth of their wonderful child, Prices. Okay, I've taken that analogy way too far. Hit the music, and make sure to subscribe and smash that like button. Okay, so we've been introduced to demand, we've learned all about supply, but talking about either one of those by themselves really misses the whole point. We need to examine how they function and interact with each other. That's what really matters. Here it is, our supply and demand model. Our axes are still price and quantity. We have our downward sloping demand curve because consumers prefer low prices, and we have our upward sloping supply curve because sellers prefer high prices. See that point where the supply and demand curves intersect with each other? That is known as market equilibrium. At this point, the quantity supplied is equal to the quantity demanded. Now, I know that this part might be a little bit annoying, but you have to do it. I need you to always draw the little dotted lines from the equilibrium point out to each axis. This is how we derive our equilibrium price and quantity. And if you're an AP student, the AP exam requires you to do this on every single model that you draw. So let's say this is a model of the market for oranges. At the price of P1, the quantity demanded by buyers is equal to the quantity sellers are willing to sell. At this point, the market is said to be in equilibrium. This will be your starting point almost every time you're ever asked to draw a supply and demand model. But what would happen if the price was higher, let's say at P2? Well, notice that at a price above the equilibrium, the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. This creates a surplus. In other words, sellers are willing to sell a greater quantity at the higher price than buyers are willing to actually buy. That difference between the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded is the surplus. Firms would only be able to sell up to QD units at that price because it doesn't matter how many units sellers are willing to sell if buyers aren't willing to buy them. Our market is in a state of disequilibrium. So what happens now? Well, at this point, market forces are gonna drive prices towards equilibrium. In this case, that means that the price will decrease. As the price decreases, the surplus will get smaller and smaller until it's eliminated. Once we reach the market equilibrium price, where quantity supplied and quantity demanded are once again balanced. On the other hand, what if price was below equilibrium? Well, look at P3. Now we see the opposite issue as before. The quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. And this creates a shortage, meaning that buyers are willing to buy a greater quantity at this low price than sellers are willing to sell. That difference between the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied is the shortage. Even though buyers are willing to buy QD units, only QS units will actually be sold because you can't buy something if it's not for sale. And at that low price, sellers are only willing to sell QS units. Again, we're in disequilibrium. So we're going to see a similar story play out here. Market forces, meaning supply and demand, are going to drive prices towards equilibrium. So that means prices are going to rise since quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied. As that happens, the shortage gets smaller and smaller until it's once again eliminated and we reach the market equilibrium price where quantity supplied and quantity demanded are once again equal. One of the major takeaways here is that when there's an imbalance like a shortage or a surplus, market forces naturally correct the problem, bringing the market back into equilibrium. Now, I also want you to really think about how we get a price. It's from the interaction between buyers and sellers. Now, I know when you walk into a store, the seller usually has put a price tag on something, so it feels like the seller is set prices, but that really isn't true. If the price is too high, people won't buy it, and that provides a signal that the price needs to be reduced. If the price is too low and they sell out immediately, well, that's a signal that the price needs to be raised. The price system is really an incredible way of providing information to both buyers and sellers of the preferences of other people and of the relative scarcity of goods and services. I'm thinking that a video all about the price system could be really useful. But for right now, we want to know, okay, if supply or demand increases or decreases, how will this affect equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity? Equilibrium price is the price when our market is in equilibrium. And yep, you guessed it. Equilibrium quantity is the quantity when our market is in equilibrium. 
In almost any econ class, you're going to be asked to draw supply and demand models all the time. So we start here with our market in equilibrium. We want to go through what happens if supply or demand changes, and we also want to feel really comfortable graphing it because you're going to be asked to graph it a lot. So let's say there's an increase in demand. Remember our determinants of demand? It could be any one of them. But the point is, demand increases. So this shifts our demand curve to the right. We're going to label our new demand curve D2 to show that this is the new one. We're also going to draw an arrow pointing to the right to show the direction of the shift. You don't ever want to lose a point on a test because the score couldn't tell which direction your curve was shifting. So be very careful to make sure that you always completely label everything. Now we're not quite done yet. We're going to draw our dotted little lines out to each axis from our new point of equilibrium. And then on the axis, we're going to use arrows to indicate what's happened to price and what's happened to quantity. In this case, both price and quantity have gone up. Multiple choice questions love to give you something that increases demand and then ask you how that affects the price or the quantity. So this is how you find out. You graph it. Now, what if demand decreased? Well, decrease means that it shifts left, so we draw our new demand curve, D2, to the left of the original. I also like to go ahead and relabel the first demand curve as D1. Draw the arrow pointing left. Draw our little dotted lines out to each axis, and then on the axis, indicate what's happened to price and quantity. They've both decreased. So the nice thing about demand shifts is that whatever happens to demand, the same thing happens to both price and quantity. They either all increase or they all decrease. Supply, on the other hand, is once again not quite as simple. Let's start with a supply increase. So we draw our new supply curve, S2, out to the right of S1. Notice that our new equilibrium shows us that we have a new lower price and larger quantity. This is the best possible outcome for consumers. There's more available and it's cheaper. In contrast, a decrease in supply is typically seen as the worst case outcome for consumers. Our new supply curve, S2, is to the left of S1. Draw our arrow to indicate the leftward shift. The equilibrium price has risen and the quantity has decreased. So there's not as much available and whatever is available is more expensive. Yuck. Sounds a lot like the market for Jordans. Oh well. Okay, so that's what you're going to have to graph. It really shouldn't be too bad, honestly. There's only four possible outcomes. Don't sit around trying to memorize this, but rather practice and try to internalize it so that you can figure it out for yourself when the time comes. One last thing, you might be wondering, well, what if supply and demand both shift at the same time? First, good news, you won't ever have to graph that, so that's good. But you will be asked about that scenario, so it's important to know how to figure it out. So first, I'm going to start with how not to do it. You can't solve this by drawing. Let's say the question tells you that both supply and demand increase. Well, depending on how you draw it, you're going to get very different outcomes for what happens to price. The truth is that we don't know how far we should be shifting these curves, so we don't know whether it should increase or decrease. What we do is take what we do know. So here are the results from each shift that we established before, and now we just compare them. If demand increases, the price rises. If supply increases, the price falls. That means that we don't know what will happen to price if both of these happen at the same time. But let's look at quantity. Demand increases, so does quantity. And when supply increases, again, so does quantity. So this tells us that if both supply and demand increase, we know that quantity will increase while we're unsure of what will happen to price. Well, all right, party people, that's it for this video. Until next time, this has been a La Money production. Thanks again for watching. Please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to check out the description for links to the answers to these practice questions, as well as the great study aids that I've made for you. And I will see you in the next video.